Japan has officially ranked as the second best country in the entire world, beating America. But how did that happen? Yeah, this is a controversial new ranking that just came out from U.S. News and World Report in collaboration with the Wharton School at UPenn. Andrew, coming in at number five, we've got Australia. Aussies. Coming in at number four, we've got Canada. Oh, yeah. Number three, we've got United States. America. These stars don't bleed. These straps don't bleed. Number two, Andrew, we've got Japan. Arigato gozaimasu. And number one, we've got Switzerland. Oh. So we got to talk about this, Andrew. Uh, so this is controversial, and it's not because I guess a lot of people in the Western world are kind of unhappy right now, right? And uh, guess what? This is the exact same ranking as 2019. Oh, my goodness. So, so it's the, actually really not, uh, I guess it's like a big deal every year they release it, but it's not. Right. But I think we got to go into the comment section. How are people feeling about this list? Has anything changed? Because obviously you could say the United States is in turmoil right now, but also you could say that it's really not in bad shape at all, depending on how you look at things. So guys, we're going to delve into this. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Check out Smile Last Sauce at Amazon.com. By the way, Andrew, number six was Sweden. Number seven was Germany. Number eight was the United Kingdom. Number nine, New Zealand. And number 10 was Denmark. Other notable Asian countries on the list, Andrew. Number 14, Singapore. Whoa, I'm surprised Singapore was that low because usually Singapore is considered the cleanest, nicest, you know why? well-ran country in you all know, of but Asia. But you know why? U.S. World News and Report, it is a Western ranking, Andrew. What do Western countries care a lot about? Freedom. You don't have freedom in Singapore, uh, Singapore. one not, party not, rule. Not super free, yes. Hey, number 16 came with China. In a way, I I thought it could have been higher, it could have been lower, depending on, you know, the Western world is just the At way. At 16, China? Okay, Andrew, Andrew, not Andrew, bad. They ranked it above South Korea at number 18. Whoa. By oh the way, do- this is not a where you would like to live ranking. This is based on, like, country power. Wow, South Korea, man. I th- I could see the Koreans being a little bit butthurt about that, man. <laughs> Rank it l- below China. That, there's no way that Japan is number two and we are number 18. Uh, 28, Andrew. Thailand. 33, India. 38, Malaysia. 41, Indonesia. 44, Vietnam. And 45, Philippines. Mm. By the way, guys, there's a lot of factors. This is not just based on quality of life, Andrew. There's a lot of things. Entrepreneurship, adventure, heritage, and including factors of countries' projected future growth. Yeah. Guys, all in all, I would say America ranking right below Japan at number three I would say based on how a lot of people have been talking about America, that's not a bad ranking at all. Like I would say the U.S. is actually kind of high considering how many people in America, and we've talked about it in our videos, think that America's collapsing. Right. Well, it, it's very, very interesting because the emotional sentiment based on the current trend lines, but where the stock is actually at are different. So we're going to get into that. Real quick, Andrew, I just got five quick thoughts on Japan. I'll tell you this, Andrew. Japan is one of the best places I've ever been. You were a fan. Do you like it? I had fun in Japan. Japan was great. Very clean. Uh, Food was great. Food was affordable. People Uh, are polite. People are polite. And if not polite, at least they're like, don't bother you. So I think that's great. It is easy to offend them, though, by them feeling like you're not being polite to them. That's how polite they are. Yeah, yeah. don't talk too loud on the subway. um, And I'll say this. I've ne- I don't think if you're Asian American, you have seen so many IG stories of your friends visiting Japan over the past three years. It's probably been insane, right? Especially because the yen is kind of weak right now. Um, number two, I would say that Japan actually lives up to my lived up to my expectations, mm. and that's not true for a lot of places in the world. Andrew, you recently went to Paris. You recently went to Italy. Did it live up to your expectations? Uh, I actually tried to temper and lower my expectations when I went there because I'd heard so much about Paris syndrome. I thought Paris was nice for the few days I was there. I went to Italy, uh, Florence. Uh, I would say they kind of met the expectations, but I didn't have the highest expectations. But I had high expectations for Tokyo when we went to Tokyo. And it lived up to it. Yeah, it was great. Number three, I think to be fair, to spend a long, long time in Japan, you kind of got to be like, 
a little bit of a weeb or like have some sort of family connection there, right? Um, you know, we got some family connections in Japan. Uh, number four, it really helps to meet Japanese people when you're in Japan. They kind of like maybe went to college in America or went to like U of H, you know, University of Hawaii. It basically will like bridge the gap for you when you're in Japan, right? So, because it, it helps to have like friends that are, that are half westernized, half local. Um, number five, I do think that it, honestly, if you made me, I could live in Japan for the next couple of years. In fact, if you made me live in Japan right now for two years or Kansas, America, I'm picking Tokyo. Mm. Like if I had to make a split to second decision. David, I mean, I guess comparing Tokyo to Kansas, uh, not that flattering to the Japanese. What do you mean? No, oh. I said that's not a, that flattering of a statement. No, but I'm saying a lot of Americans would pick Kansas, though. I know, but you're comparing Kansas to Tokyo. They're not comparable, to be honest. No offense to Kansas. Uh, number six, a lot of things in life are situational. So a lot of these things, like these country rankings, they're just trying to give you an overall macro picture, but it has nothing to... Like, you could be the richest person in Indonesia, and Indonesia is going to be amazing, even though on the country rankings... It was like near 50, mm. right? So it's about like individual positioning. Anyway, let's just get into the comment section real quick. Somebody said, oh man, the weeb population just increased again because the weebs are always sharing this news about how great Japan is. And then other people came in from Japan as well as other people more critical of Japan saying Japan is really racist. People who are from Japan were like, you know, our work culture here is very stressful. I don't think people know how stressful it is. Mm. So I guess... What do you think it is about people, Andrew, wanting to see Japan win? Because there is a lot of weebs globally that are like, yeah, Japan, Japan, Japan. But they're not even living in Japan. Yeah, I mean, I obviously, I think if you have to work a super demanding job with a demanding boss, that will make your life a little bit less enjoyable versus you visiting Japan uh, when you're learning English or teaching English, you know, having a real chill job, not really... Uh, you're not responsible for the society, right? Yeah, and you're not responsible for a family, maybe. Maybe it is different, but overall, I mean, I think everybody understands that Japan if at least only for a week at a time, is super enjoyable. Right. You see the you know, people walking around with tortoises. There's like eight-year-old kids living their life like an adult. Um, this next comment said, Switzerland is dope. And somebody just said, you know what makes Switzerland and Japan dope is because of their culture. People there have, are, have like a very high moral threshold. Uh, yeah, I think they have a lot of pride and they uphold the social norms and laws of the country a lot. And I think that people are like, oh, like, well, what if you really want to be free and do whatever you want? I mean, I think that in Japan, obviously, as far as subculture, you can join any subculture you want. You want to duty wine with the Jamaicans. You want to act like you look like a cholo in Tokyo. They actually have all those scenes. But at the end of the day, all those people are following the rules. The rule is you can express yourself but also don't bother other people and don't hurt other people. Right, and right, I right. think in America, sometimes everybody's like, express yourself, great, that's freedom, but then also just like do whatever crime you want. Right, right, right. When people are like cosplaying something in America, they tend to go to the, they take on the illegal side too. Right, right. Um, this person, then there was a bunch of comments saying the U.S. being third is crazy to me. Oh, my gosh. This list lo, list just lost all its credibility. It was just the U.S. listing the U.S. at number three to not make the U.S. feel bad. So, basically, there was a lot of people feel, feeling like or buying into the pattern right now where a lot of Americans are dumping on America. But a lot of people were saying that's also very American. Mm. Um, or do you think that people are confusing the trend lines that... America's no longer a blue chip stock or is America just a blue chip stock Andrew, in the stock market that happens to be not performing very well like Nike? Nike, by all means, is still a blue chip stock, but it just had a really bad quarter. Dude, America is a blue chip stock. America is still makes up a large, the biggest portion of the S&P 500 or whatever you want to use the analogy for. It's just in a little bit of a rut. And I think it is good that people acknowledge where America is going so that we can all do better and make it better. Right. But I do think that life in America is like really depending on almost like what state you live in. Some people were saying if Massachusetts was the whole country, then America would be ranking just the same as Switzerland. 
but the mm. whole country is in Massachusetts. Mm. Well, that's what I read in the comments section, at least. Somebody said, America over Canada, that doesn't add up to me. And then a bunch of Canadians were, like, naming all the problems in Canada right now, being uh, just insane food prices and everything like that. Basically, people are mad because... Like, it's just worse than it was, but it doesn't mean that it's worse than other countries. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are talking about, like, you know, what is the difference between Switzerland and Japan from America? But here, Andrew, then there came a bunch of comments from Asians, because I pulled this from Next Shark, that were saying, do you guys understand as a consumer how lucky you are to live in the United States? And did you know how expensive goods are in other countries? And this guy said, man, you guys are so ungrateful. Our parents brought us here for a reason. How can we as second generation Asian American kids uh, start criticizing and be all dumping on America? Right, right. Hey guys, I want to give a shout out to our friend from Seattle. Uh, I'll just keep his identity, uh, you know, mysterious for now. But he's a Cambodian guy from Seattle. And he moved to Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden. Married a beautiful blonde Swedish lady. And he's living his life out there. And that's a Cambodian American. So shout out to him. But I think that that is, uh, that's why Sweden is, I know Switzerland and Sweden are different places, guys. I know Sweden is ranked uh, number six. But right. I'm just saying that... Uh, just wanted to point out a friend who did something that I didn't expect. Well, he was do. almost like a inverse passport bro. Yeah. Because usually it's like a white guy going to Southeast Asia. Yeah, I mean, Asia, this guy's kind of like Asia, a Sweden. Cambodian from like, you know, the inner city. And now he's in Sweden living his life. It's awesome. Did his thing, man. And uh, uh, a lot of people are talking about America's healthcare system. They're talking about taxes. They're just talking about how it wasn't as good anymore. And then, of course... Other people are listing, oh, what? You want to go to Japan where they'll never accept you if you're not Japanese and you, you know, this, the economy's been stagged, had stagflation since the 90s. Mm. So, of course, everybody was just listing out all the problems that they see in every society. Right, right, right. So, I guess here's the truth, man. The truth is, in my opinion, like, life is a lot like a video game, you know? And I just think that the answers of like, what's the best game for you or what's the best game map you should pick. I realized in 2024, Andrew, the answer is becoming more variable on your own personal situation than even the country that you're going to. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying in the past, it was all about the country that you were immigrating to. Yes, because in the past, I agree that uh, even the 30, 40 years ago, the country's GDPs and the way of life was so different. And America had so many steps above almost every Asian country minus Japan at the time, like 30, 40 years ago. It was so much better that it was like it's like a no brainer ahead, yeah. that if you're just an average American and you went over to any Asian country minus Japan, that you were going to have a great time and ball out, right? Now especially in the big cities of Asia, almost all the big cities in Asia, it's a little bit more even. It's a lot more closer. So now it's more like, well, And you can even depends. argue that the top tier in some of those countries is arguably even better than what we yeah, have in the US. Argu now. Arguably, for sure, for sure. And I'm just saying it's even enough where to the point where you, it really depends on like what you're doing, what are your connections, and what type of like attack power and tools you're working with, right? And that's really gonna matter how, like our friend, our Cambodian friend from Seattle, he had a good job uh, doing graphic design and he got transferred to Sweden. So that's why kind of he moved there to work for uh, some Swedish companies. So obviously he has a cool design job out there. He's meeting cool people. He's in the in crowd of the open-minded people. So yeah, he was able to find his way and live a happy life, which was probably a little unexpected for a lot of his friends. But also probably on a probability wise, I wouldn't tell everybody here to go move to Sweden. That just worked out for him. Exactly. So it's very, very situational. I'll say this though. I think the U.S. is still the best starting point. Yeah. But I don't sure. think that people should feel like they're stuck here if they feel like they align or like click with or another game map yeah. resonates better with them. Let me tell you this. I think at the end of the day, if I had to sum this up, if you have a good job, a good, well-paying job that's of a larger network that wants to transfer you to X city, you can almost move to any city and have a good life if you have that good job because that job is a system. That job is going to pay you. They're going to help set you up. You are going to probably come in as an expat, as an American of some sort, whether you're white or Asian or black or whatever race you are from America, but you're going to have that expatriate status and that American passport. So with that good job, you can really do anything anywhere. 
is yeah. what I mean. And obviously with technology, the translation tools that are available through AI, I guess there's, I would say for sure there's less language barriers. And I even want to say there's less cultural barriers than there was for sure 20 years ago. Yep. Because uh, there's more like global culture now, more shared society. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Ultimately, the world is opening up. Some people love that. Some people hate that, but it's happening. So I would always recommend that you guys figure out where is the best place for you, whether that is in your uh, original country of birth or elsewhere, fit in where you get in. Uh, get in where you fit in. That's what I meant to say. Until next time, guys, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.